What's up, YouTube? Hope Uncle Barbecue back with you again. This is the hot seat, and today we've got Brian and Kirk. Kirk is on the left, Brian is on the right, and they are from Smokestacks Pans. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having us on. All right, so we're going to do this a little bit backwards than normal because they're sitting outside and they want to show you guys what they have. So I'm going to basically give you guys a 30,000 foot view of the product. They're going to show you kind of how it works and everything, and then we'll go into the other questions that we typically do. So guys, kind of tell the people what the Smokestacks Pans is and what it's all about. All right, hey, um, so uh, Kirk and I, we, we came up with this idea about back in December, and really it came from, hold on, I gotta turn this off, this is, it really it came from, uh, so we had, uh, I, I got a Weber Smoky Mountain last year, and we, we were using it, and I noticed that there wasn't a, a round barbecue pan. I kind of was like, kept asking Kirk, I'm like, God, I can't believe that no one makes anything round for all these round cookers. You know, you got the Big Green Egg, you've got Weber Smoky Mountains, and you've got numerous other you know, products uh, that are out there that are round, and there just wasn't anything out there for that. So Kirk and I started to brainstorm back in December, and we decided to go ahead and move forward and come out with Smokestacks, which is ultimately is a round pan that allows you to stack them up on top of each other and smoke multiple food at one time without getting cross contamination from whatever's above it dripping down below because the, the pan is self-contained but it still allows the smoke and airflow to get down into the bottom pan and, and penetrate and give you the smoke that you you, you want for uh you know whatever level you're coming on okay um i think you guys are losing light really quick so you guys want to flip over to However, you guys wanted to kind of showcase that and do it before it gets too dark to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah let's go do that, and then we'll probably have to move inside. So I'll carry these. It's coming, Ken. It's coming. I promise you. Oh, I'm just going to take a little yeah. tour here. Okay. <laughs> It's still kind of hard to see. We're going to have to get you some, some light maybe. On Let's the turn, turn the egg around. All right. We'll go this way. Set that down. Turn this around. There we go. So we can get a better view. Can you see it or no? Yeah. Okay. So so here we have one, one of our smokestack pans. Uh, they're cast aluminum. They're 15 inches round. And uh, they've got a one inch deep food rack and they're, they're four and a half inches deep overall. So on a large uh, a product like a, a large big green egg, you can fit two pans on top of each other and you can still close the lid and you can smoke two items at one time. So for example, you could have a, a turkey and stuffing, you know, a, a large amount of stuffing for Thanksgiving all on your big green egg. Or you can do a pork butt and uh, 15 pounds of mac and cheese in these pans because they're so deep and they're so big. So they they allow you to cook a lot of food at once. Um, I've got a Weber Smoky Mountain that, that we use, and I'm able to fit four pans in an 18-inch Weber Smoky Mountain. Now, normally you couldn't do that. Like in a 22-inch, you wouldn't be able to do that. You could fit three. But because of the, the diameter of the pan, they actually will sit on the water bowl rack, and you could put a fourth pan in the Weber Smoky Mountain. And, uh, we've got some videos out there that, that showcase that, so anybody can go to our website and see that kind of uh, that in action as well. And there's the three-legged dog in the background. There's Toby. Oh. <laughs> Missed him. Yeah. So full disclosure, I came across these guys. Actually, it was, Brian had posted something on a Facebook group, and I saw where it shows the location. It said Lake Cable, which is where I live. So I had to ask a couple other YouTubers that he was friends with, who is this guy? And he said, oh, he's got some kind of pan system. So last Sunday, they let me come over and kind of get the hands-on feel of it and check it out. And then we decided to do the show. So that's kind of how they ended up here today. I mean, what a small world uh, that, that here we are. We're, we're less than a mile apart. And you're into barbecue. And we've come out with this, and now you know, here we are on the show tonight. It's awesome. Right. I don't know if you guys want to 
Yeah, we're going to move inside into the garage so we can get some light and actually show you the pans up close a little bit. So just give us 30 seconds or so. Kirk's going to go in there, and we'll be right behind him. All right, I'll go through the chat real quick. Uh, we got Lewis at our shack barbecue, Dan Smoky Goodness, Baker Barbecue, who's been missing for a while, but he told me he's going to be back and had a really good video the other day. Barlow Barbecue, back from his vacation, Double J Barbecue, Christie's Cooking Channel, Scott, my co-host, who will be back next week, he has promised me, Ken Heavy Metal Barbecue. Is that better? Is that better? Is the light better here? You are much better. Awesome. Great. Right, so laptop in here. Hold on one second. Oh, there we go. We're ready. All right. So kind of show the people the design. I mean, I, I know what you guys have. So just kind of. So here's what we got. We've got, uh, the, it's a 15 inch. It's food grade uh, cast aluminum. And, and, you know, one of the, the, the unique things about this is, you know, it's made in the USA, which is uh, one of our, you know, was one of our core, you know, I'd say, values that, that we wanted to stick to is we wanted a product that was made in the USA. And we can tell a little bit that story, uh, it, it, the whole story in a little bit. But um, this is actually made in, it's handcrafted Amish made. Uh, it's made about 40 minutes from our headquarters here in Canton, Ohio. And, uh, you know, it's made of food grade aluminum. It's about seven and a half pounds. It's four, four and a half inches deep, and it's got a one inch deep food rack. So what we did was we designed it, you know, one of the drawbacks about smoking or cooking in pans is that if you put a, a pork butt or chicken into the, the pan, you're going to have, it's going to be sitting in the juice. So we designed the pan to have a food rack in there to keep the meat above the juice, but allow the smoke and airflow to go underneath the, uh, whatever it is you're cooking so it can form a bark on the entire piece of meat. Just like you'd be on a, on a rack, except it doesn't drip down to, to whatever's below it. Right. So I already got a question in the chat from Lewis at our shack. Barbecue wants to know how easy are the pans to clean? Actually, here, I'm going to show you. Um, so what we did, this, this one's been used about seven times, I think. Um, so it, since it's cast iron, what you do is cast aluminum. Or, or cast aluminum, sorry. It, 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 but it's similar to cast iron. We season it with grapeseed oil. We rub it down with grapeseed oil. Uh, we, first, you wash it with soap and water. You rub it down with the grapeseed oil. And then you put it in the oven for you know, 250 for maybe three hours or so. And then it, it seasons it and gives it a nonstick surface. So, you know, once, once you use the pan, uh, you know, we've been experimenting with several different ways to clean it. We pressure washed them, you know, because these things are heavy duty. They weigh seven and a half pounds. They won't blow away like anything else. But uh, actually what we found so far to be the best way is, you know, right after we're done cooking, we, we, we wash them out with just hot water because they're seasoned. You don't want to use soap. Uh, you can put them in the dishwasher with no soap, run it up, run it through the dishwasher. And, uh, these things, they come out pretty clean and, and it retains the nonstick surface, uh, so that you, you continue to build that, uh, just like cast iron, it, it continues to season itself as you use it. Right. So I see Keith Buttag wants to know when you've got multiple pans in there, and you, maybe you guys don't have the answer to this yet, but how much more charcoal usage are you guys typically noticing versus without? Actually, I don't it's, it's the same, actually, because the pans are cast aluminum and they're heavy duty. So once they heat up, you're actually, your smoke will actually keep temperature better. It's than it, than, similar than to having the water bowl in there. You exactly. know, you put a water bowl in, the water gets up to temperature. It helps regulate the temperature in your smoker. These do that for you because they're 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 thick, seven and a half pounds. It, it's going to retain the heat. It's going to absorb the heat, and then it's going to come up to temperature. And then we've noticed, like, when we take the lid off of my Weber Smoky Mountain, uh, it, it, it comes back up to the, the temperature that we have it set at pretty quickly at we we feel like it's actually quicker than it was before yeah. with the pans in there absolutely so i actually talked to our metallurgist at work and kind of looked up you, you had sent me uh i can't remember what grade the aluminum is 356 and kind of did a little bit of high level research on that and actually if i remember correctly aluminum is a better conductor than 
your carbon steel or your uh, stainless steel? Well, absolutely. All high tension lines are made of, you know, the high tension lines, the, the power lines are all uh, a, a pure aluminum, but they're pure aluminum. It's not 356 grade. However, they do conduct heat and energy a lot better than, than steel. The other thing is uh, Kirk actually was trained at the Culinary Institute of America. And uh, so he's, he's a trained chef and, and has used, you know, numerous aluminum cookware from probably the time you started cooking, you've been using aluminum a cookware. Absolutely. And back, back to the point you were going to make, you, you were making there, Chris, about aluminum and the conductivity. It's a good, it, it's good. I think the only thing I've seen in the research I did is uh, copper, I think, was, yep. was a little bit better. Oh, yeah. And that's why all the French pans, like the French, all the French, not all the all the French chefs, but like most of the be best French chefs in the world use copper because it conducts better. Yeah. but It's a lot more expensive, yeah. too. <laughs> you, you pay for what you get. Unless you go to Ollie's Bargain Barn, you can get those new copper pans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a Northeast Ohio joke. Um, uh, Dan at Smoky Goodness wants to know uh, how high of a temperature can they handle? Well, we've taken them up to 450 already. Um, and with, with no problem. Uh, the, our, our foundry man, the guy that's actually producing them for us, said we can take them up to 700 degrees without any issue. So, but we've had them at 450. We've had actually we put them on a on a gasser just to see how hot we can get them. We didn't want to get them over 450 because we thought uh, if the smoke goes out of control, you might get up to 450, 500. But uh, you know, uh, Dennis told us that that we, we can take this thing up to uh, eight, nine hundred. Yeah, I mean, it, unless you put it directly on the coals, nothing's going to touch it. It's not going to hurt this thing. Yeah, because it's so thick. Yeah, it's almost a quarter inch thick of of cast solid cast aluminum. So. It, it, like cast iron, it can take the heat. It's just cast iron can go directly on the coals and aluminum. You you know, it, it'll melt it over. It, it takes over a thousand degrees to melt aluminum. All right. So I did a little research on aluminum because sometimes X number of years ago, there was a Canadian study that said cooking with aluminum gives people Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, I, from what I read, there was kind of a People who have Alzheimer's tend to have a higher level of aluminum. There was kind of no, I think that's kind of changed, but I wanted to, you know, kind of get your guys' thought process on that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it, that is an interesting question. And, you know, the, the data is everybody perceives it the way that they want to perceive it. Some people don't cook on aluminum, but they'll eat a Tums and it has 10 times more aluminum than you would get probably an entire year off of eating aluminum cookware or using deodorant. However, like if you go to any commercial kitchen, any like almost every restaurant in the United States of America, they serve all their food is prepared in aluminum cookware. Either they're baking sheets, saute pans. I've worked in over 15 kitchens because I, I you know, I was a culinary professional for many years, a chef. And the reason why most American companies use aluminum is because people will steal it. If you have like all this high dollar, let's say copper, like we were talking about before, cookware. These guys, it's going to end up in somebody's book bag or their backpack and they're going to take it home. So now everybody's using aluminum. And so if people are afraid of using aluminum, they shouldn't go out to eat in any restaurants because they're using all aluminum saute pans, baking sheets, etc. All right. Um, so I know there's going to be some guys here that are kind of curious about this, but and give as much or as little detail as you want, but kind of go through the process of creating the product and all the steps it takes to get from, you know, you guys are at the Kickstarter phase, but obviously there's a lot of steps between that kind of talk that process through. And I know Kirk talking to you the last weekend, you, you've kind of done this. This isn't your first rodeo doing that. So. Yeah. This is a, it's a, it's a pretty unique story. So um, like I said, we started this journey back in December when we finally decided that uh, we wanted to go ahead and, and make the investment and, and go ahead and produce or, or, or start the process of bringing smokestacks to life. Um, we met with uh, Kirk had a designer. So, so Kirk's been through this in the past. He has invented a wrench and has several patents on a wrench. And so he's had the experience of going through a lot of this. So we were able to speed up the process 
and, and utilize his past experiences, whether they were good or bad. Uh, yeah. We use those uh, experiences to, to speed up the process. So in December, we met, met with the designer and, and we had uh, some ideas of what we wanted and how we wanted it to work. And uh, after several meetings and several renderings, we came up and, and uh, agreed upon what you see today, which is smokestacks pans. Uh, but what we originally wanted to do is the, the entire pan was supposed to be made of heavy duty aluminum foil. It was going to be uh, something that you could purchase in a pack of 10, you know, a, a, you buy them for a couple bucks each and throw them away. And so, you know, we got, we got the designs, we filed our patents with the drawings, which, you know, the patents, it doesn't matter what you make it out of. It's, it's the, the drawing and the design and the function. So we, we filed all of that in January, formed the company uh, slightly after that, or, or during that time period, um, we filed trademark protection for smokestacks. Um, we ordered, so then, so then we've, we've got all of that formed. Then we have to get prototypes. So what we did was we ordered 3D prototypes and we started off small because plastic, 3D plastic. Yeah, 3D prototypes. plastic prototypes. So uh, we started off small because, you know, uh, obviously one, we're just two guys with a, with an idea. So we want to just take baby steps. We didn't want to spend all of our money in one place. And then we wanted to test to make sure it really worked. Yeah, because, we, we weren't sure if it was going to work because everybody said a, a barbecue pan has to have holes in it, it like to get smoke flow. Exactly. And so we didn't think so. However, that's why we got. That's why we ordered the plastic, small three D product. Yeah. So we so we order these plastic ones. They're half size. Uh, we we get them here, and what 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 we do to test it is we run a cold smoking. Uh, so we cold smoke some cheese. We put cheese in the top pan, cheese in the bottom pan. These things are really literally six inches wide, and we, you can see some of the, the results in the videos that we did. Uh, not great videos, but you can see some of it. Uh, but the result was the cheese on the bottom looked and tasted smoky, just like the cheese in the top pan that was open to all of the smoke. So we determined that, you know, so we did it twice. We felt that it worked enough that we would go ahead and make the investment and get the larger prototypes, the full size prototypes. So as we're doing that, we, we got these prototypes, we order them, we're, we're trying to source production uh, of our product. So we want to make these out of foil. And we, uh, I, I probably co contacted 30, 40, 50 different, whether it was through a, an email submission portal or physically over the phone, that many tool and die manufacturers to, to make our product for us. And... Of all the places I contacted, I, we had two quotes. At, both of the quotes were over $100,000 for tooling to make a foil pan, and neither one of the places could, uh, could manufacture for us to even test to make sure it worked. Gotcha. So, you know, from there, so, so we kind of were at a crossroads. We, we were either uh, going to have to go probably make this thing in China because we don't have $100,000 and, and – Everybody says you can make everything cheaper in China. And, you know, Kirk's actually with his previous product has had quotes and things like that from China. So he understands that process a little bit more, too. So we were looking at that. But ultimately, uh, we made the decision to to stick to what we wanted to do and make it in the USA. And, and we got lucky. And Kirk found uh, Dennis, the Amish founder. And uh, we were able to get our prototypes and, and, and start testing. Cool. All right, I gotta ask you the hard question. What's that? Cost. What's it cost? Right. So right now on Kickstarter, so uh, we've been live on Kickstarter for 21 days, right. and we've uh, had uh, almost almost 21 thousand dollars worth of orders. So you know we're we're so pumped. If there's any of the backers watching this video right now, you guys are are the the best. We couldn't Thank be doing you. this without you guys. Honest to God. Uh, your support means everything to us. So we really appreciate that. Uh, so right now though, on Kickstarter, it's $75 a pan plus shipping. And, and that's a 25% discount from what we're going to be retailing these for. Uh, we've met with several retailers. Uh, we've uh, talked to them about pricing and uh, we're all very confident that, uh, the, you know, each pan is going to cost a hundred dollars uh, plus shipping uh, after the campaign ends. And again, th these pans are, are an investment for 
low and slow, low and slow cooking. And they're going to last. You can hand these down to your kids. They're going to last longer than, than we're going to be here. Right. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to how these shows normally go and kind of get into the more about you guys type thing now that we've got light and everything else. Uh, <laughs> Ken at Heavy Metal Barbecue says, I'm looking for affiliates. Give me a call. <laughs> Nice. Well, you can contact contact us on our webpage. Yeah, Smokestack Pans. Uh, there's a contact us at, right at the bottom. Just just shoot us over an email, man. We'd uh, love to talk to you. All right. So, uh, what's your guys' real jobs? I'm a contractor. Uh, actually, uh, it's kind of funny how Brian and I met. I renovated his entire house, and uh, well, almost. Yeah, pretty three much. Three quarters of it. So I lived here for about um, nine months. Yeah, about nine months. No, it was about six months. Six yeah. months. He, it felt like nine months. Yeah, it felt like. An but eternity. anyways, the, the the when I when I was working here, that's when I was going through my whole wrench process, like the the patents and the. So he was he pretty much knew me when I was going through my other invention that I was working on. So he kind of had an idea how it worked. So that's what I do. I, I renovate houses. I rent. That's how Brian and I became friends. Is I worked in his house for six months, and I basically became part of the family. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Kirk's uh, like he said. So once we met, we've been. Uh, he was here every day when I uh, went to work, and he was here when I got home. And uh, so we we got to do a lot of talking. And and once uh, you know we we identified the problem with the the smoking. I knew he had the expertise to get the, the the patenting done and all of that and the production. And then, you know, what I do in my regular job is I, I'm a pharmaceutical sales rep. Um, I work for Gilead. And then uh, I also own a, a lice treatment center in Canton, Ohio. So I'm <laughs> kind of diverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that's called the lice wizard. Yeah. And uh, so if know, anybody has lice in the Canton, Ohio area, you got to call. Yeah, them. we can take care of that. <laughs> and then we can get you the, the best barbecue pans in the land, <laughs> yeah. man. <laughs> Remind me if I ever come back over to yeah, ten feet away from you. Come back over again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, real quick, Kirk. I don't know if I'm just curious about this wrench. Yeah, I know you probably Kirk don't have one Kirk. on you. It's yeah. called the Kirk wrench. The Kirk wrench. Kirkwrench.com. Um, it's, uh, it's still. It's still. I'm still working on it, but it, it's. It's a. It's a very complex tool, and it actually reaches places that other wrenches just can't reach. It's like a modular system. It's a modular, yeah. It's a modular tool. It has three pieces. It has a handle, an arc, and a ratchet. But you can use it all in different spots. So it can literally go up to almost 360 degrees if you wanted to reach around something. Cool. Uh, Leprechaun TV, yes, Canton, Ohio. He says he lives in Cleveland. What's up? The Cavs, man, they didn't do so well last yeah. night, but I think they're gonna they're gonna win the next game, and uh, they're gonna go into Game Seven and win that too. That's my prediction. I will bring a box of Kleenex over when they lose and LeBron leaves. Oh, please, <laughs> yeah, he may. <laughs> I, I I don't have a horse in the race, but that's where my beliefs are. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I I I it could happen. All right, so Mr. Mega Fred Zeppelin asked me to ask this question every week. What are some of your favorite bands, music, etc.? Oh uh, man, I, I'm. But it, it sounds kind of weird, but I, I, the Police is my favorite band. And then I have several other bands that are that aren't American that I like. So it's it's it's. Uh, I, I like. I'm partial to Brazilian music because I'm married to a Brazilian woman. So Zeca Baleiro is my favorite uh, singer of all time. So yeah, I don't know what if he, anybody, whatever he's saying. I don't know what Zeca Z E C A Baleiro B L E I R O. That, but that's it. And you know, I just like old school rock and roll, and and uh, you know, I, I like I like good music. That's it. I, I so my favorite singer is probably Tom Petty. Uh, I like Aerosmith too. Tom Petty, Aerosmith, they're up there. I, um, I, I listen to everything from old school rap, Dre, Snoop, to rock and roll, to whatever my wife has on. So, uh, hope that answers that. 
All right. Um, hang on a minute here. I missed something in the chat. Or I didn't. All right. Um, so family, wife, kids, three-legged dog, chinchilla, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm married. My wife is Bree. Thankfully, she uh, is letting us destroy her kitchen on a weekly basis to uh, test out the pan. So thank you, honey, for that. Um, uh, we have a son that is six. His name is Hudson. And then I have a son that Bree has basically helped me raise as well. Uh, his name is Nathan, and he's 16. And then we have a three-legged dog, Toby, like you right. said. So Toby's a Wheaton Terrier. Uh, he's our, he's my grilling buddy and smoking buddy. So he's always out there with me waiting for uh, something to drop. And, uh, yeah, he's got three legs and he's about 10 years old. And yeah, that was crazy when I came over, I, cause he was laying down. I didn't notice it. And I had actually, me and Mrs. Hobo were watching something on TV before I came over with the three legged dog. And when he got up, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> well, you can't even hardly tell, you know, if it, most people, when they come over, they can't tell because, he, you know, he moves pretty quick. So you don't even notice it. Right. Yeah, me, I'm married. I've been married for 12 years. No kids that I know of. <laughs> um, I don't think I have any. But uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, I don't have any kids. I have two dogs. And that's it, man, really. I mean, it's, it's – uh, my life's pretty simple. I his kids are his inventions. Yeah, I have two dogs. Yeah, Rick James, one, one of my dogs, Rick James. He's a toy brown toy poodle, he's like cutest little dog ever. And then we have a toy pug, and she, she's her name's Butterball. <laughs> All right. So, who taught you guys how to cook? Well, I know who how Kirk learned how to fucking cook, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my mom literally taught me how to cook because when I was at, when I was little, I, I would be I would cook all the time, and I would help my mom. But uh, you know, obviously, I learned how to cook at the Culinary Institute of America. I had a couple of really great chefs. Like my my skills instructor was his name was uh, Chef Bruno Elmer, and uh, actually, he was the first master chef in the entire world. And he right now he's pretty, I'm sure he's passed away by then by now because that, this is back in the in the early 90s uh, when I went to school and uh, he was already about 65 or 68 years old but um, he cooked in like some of the best restaurants and in hotels in the world but that's who really taught me how to cook my mom taught me the basics but that's that's where I learned how I don't know how to cook anything that is not on the grill or smoker. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Honestly, even that, the mac and cheese, everything you see, that's Kirk yeah. is the chef. I can do the meat. I can do the chicken, the wings, right. uh, the smoked pulled pork. I can do all of that. But everything else is Brie. My wife does all the cooking. I can grill and smoke. That's it. <laughs> I can't even fry bologna bright. I burn it every time. That's bad. <laughs> that's bad. All right, I'm going to change up the order of the questions. Uh, so what's one thing most people don't know about each one of you? Oh, man. That's why this is called the hot seat and not uh, the lukewarm seat. <laughs> geez. Man, most people don't know I speak fluent Portuguese. Like, because I, 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 I'm a total gringo. Most people don't even know it. So that's probably like the only thing. Yeah, I. Yeah, no, there's a lot of things, but <laughs> we don't want to know about. Yeah, that. I don't so, want to know about that. I'd say most people probably don't know that my mom was born in Italy. Right. Right. And so I'm, you know, first generation on that side of the family. All right, Mr. Mega Fred Zeppelin wants to know: Have you ever barbecued a tri-tip? Yes, I have. No, I have. I've had tri tip. It's the bomb. Yeah, I want to reverse sear it, but in Ohio, I never see it at any of the. the uh, it's hard to find. Like it's, here, it's hard to find. Like in, if you're out west, California, I see all kinds of people online doing tri tips. I would love to do it. I just can't find it. But I would, if I was going to do it, I would reverse sear it. You can find it at the West Side Market in Cleveland. I know that. That's right, why. Right. I, that's why I bought. It. Then I need to go up there, and I'm going to do one. And we'll it's put, it's hard. It's hard. We'll not smoke to one, overcook it. We'll put. We'll smoke it in the in the smokestacks pan, and then we'll reverse sear it, uh, maybe over some hot coals. Yeah. Hey, when you get one, get two and drop one off at my house because 
Yeah. I've had that same struggle. Uh, exactly. Yeah, well, they're, they're, I know a stand at the West Side Market in Cleveland that though if you call ahead, they'll 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 get as many as you want. And also as as well as well, I don't know if, if anybody out here does picanha, like the Brazilian, like the you know, when you go to one of the Hodizio places where you they slice the the meat off of the uh, of the of the uh, skewer, you can buy those in Cleveland too. It blue ribbon meats, and they're like only like seven bucks a pound. That's for that's for right. picanha. Yeah, that's just Steve Red's Barbecue and Pizzeria Baby Arm, as he calls it. <laughs> that's all that guy cooks. He's another YouTube channel. What picanha? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. it's good. It's baby really arm. Good. Yeah, <laughs> he announces it and he pronounces it the same way you do. It's like straight regular. Right. Yeah, that's how they say it. Then it's picanha. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I know what it is. It's good. Pictures. <laughs> it's good. Right, so speaking of Red's Barbecue and Pizzeria, he says, "Do you know how to? I don't even know how to fuck to pronounce this. C a p o e i r a capoeira. Capoeira? No." I don't, I don't know. I know what it is, but a capoeira is that, it's that dance. It's that, it's the, it, it, it caipirinha or capoeira. I think he said capoeira. Uh, I didn't say anything. I just spelled it. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. It's capoeira. It, it's, you just spelled it. It's Brazilian. <laughs> it, it's Brazilian martial arts. And no, I, there's no way I can do it. It's uh, like, it's like judo and no, like. He couldn't uh, fight his way out of a wet paper bag. Right. No, yeah, it, it's the, neither could I though. It's kind of like judo and karate, but it's kind of slow and you know. But it's no, I, I can't do it. Is that what the guy on Meet the Fuckers, the dad, was doing? <laughs> uh, no, I think he was doing shin 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 chi or. Ah. Else. <laughs> Don't ask me. All right, follow up uh, question from Ray. Well, no, capoeira is like when you roll around each other and get all. But I have had a lot of caipirinhas, which is that national brazilian drink it's like the brazilian rum with with lime and sugar maybe I've that's had, I, i've done a lot of that <laughs> <laughs> i'm a professional actually um i don't even know if, if I'm, this is going to be even worse because i think it's in portuguese voce falha portuguese mesmo eu falo mesmo tá bom Eu, eu falo o que você quer saber. I ask them what do they want to know. I said, right, we're, we're going to move on. <laughs> we got a real Brazilian here. That's and awesome. I'm, and I'm not bullshitting. I speak fluent Portuguese. So, okay. So, so he was on two, three episodes ago. He looks like Seamus from the WWF. Awesome. Minus the Mohawk, but the Reds barbecue and pizzeria comes because he's a hardcore ginger. Um, but the is dude's built on? like Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I got to be careful how what I say to him. <laughs> is he still on? Yeah. Hey, hey, what soccer team? Where are you from? Que estado você mora? No Brasil. He's an American. I know, but he works for the Fed. He's some super secret enforcer. Black ops kills where, people. Where is, he, where is his family from in Brazil? Is what I'm saying. He's not. He's originally from here. Oh, really? So he's a gringo that speaks Portuguese, too. Nice. He's also got a Brazilian wife. Oh, that helps. All right. Uh, I don't even know where we're at. This has become a Portuguese train wreck. Uh, All right. Let's skip, let's skip the Portuguese lessons. All right. If you could cook oh, with hey, one person. It, it, it was nice talking to him in Portuguese. <laughs> There's not many of us out there that speak, not too many gringos speak Portuguese. <laughs> All right. If you could cook with one person from any period of time, who would it be? Oh, man. Uh, for me, just my mom. I'd like cooking with my mom. My mom can cook really good, but I have not picked up anything from it. Like I said, I can only grill, but I, you know that that's who I would pick. I would pick Escoffier. He's like the, the 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 inventor of modern cooking, basically, other scary? than Catherine. Well, dude, I've like been doing this forever. <laughs> Escoffier is like the French, like like master master. He's the one that pretty much invented most of every sauce, everything that we eat today. He's the one that pretty much bumped up the culinary uh, uh, experience for everybody. They're just like the basics. That's who I would if I if I would get if I would try. You know, if I would do it, I would do it. I would do Escoffier. 
The other thing with Kirk, not only did he uh, he he did the you know he's a trained chef, but he was actually on the barbecue circuit for two years. So he right. did competition barbecue, uh, you know. So not you know he he takes what he's taking what I know and and taking it to a whole nother level as well. Right. Yeah, a friend of mine had a barbecue team, and I was I was his sidekick on the barbecue team. It wasn't my team, but it was my friends. Any uh, words of encouragement or discouragement to anybody looking to get into that world? What the barbie the barbie the competition barbecue circuit? Yeah, um, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. So if 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 you're looking to like take an easy weekend, it's not the it's not it's not for you. But if you're looking to win and you want a challenge, and you want to have a meet a lot of really nice people, it's it's really fun. I mean, it's more fun than not fun. It, I, I put it that way. I just want to hang out with all of them. Right. <laughs> all right. The guy from Cleveland Leprechaun TV had just dawned on me who you are. Um, I made a comment. I can't remember where it was at, but it kind of threw me off from his channel name to like looking at his stuff, like super badass dude. But he wants to know ever get a gyro, excuse me, a gyro from Steve's at the market. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He used to be in the little corner. When you walk in, he used to be in the corner right across from my reins. But now he moved to that. He has a big spot now. There's like a line around the door. But when when Steve first started back in like the, it was probably the late '90s, I think I remember because I I was living in Cleveland at that time. He had that little corner market between the falafel guy and Irene's. Like there was like the fish market, and then there was uh, the falafel guy, and then Steve was right on the corner, and then the Irene's was right across. Yes, I have many times. Nope. All right, for people who aren't from Cleveland and have no idea what the hell the West Side Market is, kind of explain to them what that is. Yeah, I'll let Kirk handle that. Well, I mean, it, I've been it, there. It's awesome. It, it is actually the the mecca for anything you want. I mean, no matter what nationality you are, I mean, if you want to eat a steak or a sheep's head, they have it there. You can get any kind of cheese, any kind of really anything uh, produce-wise. Jerky, meats, yeah, steaks. It, yeah, then outside there there are many vendors that are from all around the world that carry different things. So if you know if if, if you're from uh, 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 hungry, uh, there's from Hungary, spices there's Hungarian and, spices. Yeah. If you're from the Middle East, they have Middle Eastern uh, spices, meats, uh, vegetables. I mean, you can just pretty much get anything you want there. It's it's a but it's a, it, like you know you go inside and never you know it's all little local stands within one contained area that you just go from stand to stand and, and they've got all different kinds of stuff. Right. And the best tip I can give about the West side market is I lived in Cleveland for a while and I live really close to the West side market. And the best time to go to the West side market is at four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon because they're closed on Sunday. They open on Monday, but they basically give away produce. I mean, they're, 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 people are begging you to buy 10 peppers for a dollar. And also, you go inside. Even the meat guys, if you talk, if you have a good relationship with some meat people, like you can actually pick meat up for half price because they don't want to. They can't put it back in the freezer. They can't. They can't do anything with it. So, anyways, as far as the West Side Market, that's the best tip I can give. Yeah, I haven't gone since they fucked the parking lot up. Me either. They now charge ten pay. bucks. Now you got to pay to park. Me, me too. I haven't been up there since then. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I got to figure out how to modify this question because I'm not, you guys have a YouTube channel, but you guys aren't YouTubers. So if Hollywood decided to make a movie about your guys' journey in this whole process, what actor would you like to have portray you in the movie? Yeah. Uh, I have no idea. God, me? <sighs> Probably Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad. Dirk Diggler. Yeah, Brad Pitt probably looks most like me, so I'd probably have to pick him. Oh man, he'd have to wear stilts. You're not a short guy. Kirk could be Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, I'm short and bald. <laughs> I'm short and bald, so yeah, Danny DeVito might be a pretty good one. Yeah, Brad Pitt and Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good. With either that, that or uh, either that or Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, Dumb and Dumber, or Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both Bullocks, so <laughs> it's like, we're lucky to be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
All right, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to have them show the pan again here in a minute cuz I know we've got a, a handful of people who showed up late and kind of give the 30,000 foot view. Um, if anybody's got any more questions ask them cuz we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. So Brian, I'll let you kind of go on about that in a 30 second clip. Yep. So all right. So uh, Kirk and I are the 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 inventors of smokestacks pans and smokestacks pans are they're handcrafted Amish sand casted aluminum so they're they're made of food grade aluminum uh they weigh about seven and a half pounds so they're heavy duty uh if you go on our website you can see we drove a v8 truck on top of these things and, and not a dent um but what the cool thing about these is is they're designed to stack so if you have a big green egg or if you have a weber smoky mountain or, or if you have a you know really a lot of different style smokers or cookers you can take these and you can stack up a second one on top of them and it allows the, the, the way we've designed the pan is that there's portals all around the pan that allow the smoke and airflow to get into the lower pans and we've tested it over and over and over again and it works very effective because the smoke when it's it, when it's in your smoker you watch look at it when it's smoking if there's any kind of crack there's smoke coming out of it and it's inside these pans so what we did was, in addition to, to having the pans be able to stack, we designed them with a one-inch deep food rack in there. So now you're cooking in a pan, but you don't have to sacrifice uh, the, the the bark on your your meat. So you can put it on, uh, put your chicken, your pork shoulder, uh, your your meatloaf, your turkey, anything on top of this rack. And it, because of the way it's designed, it allows the smoke and airflow to go underneath the meat. And give you bark and that that what you're looking for that color on the entire piece of meat and then you know with the way it's designed there's handles that go all the way around the pan so it's very easy to lift uh in and out of a vertical smoker uh an, an egg and, and um so they're made in the usa they're 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 amish made uh in ohio and uh they're they're for sale now you can uh get them on kickstarter we're fully funded uh, if you order these today, they're going to be shipping in August. And uh, right now you can save 25% off of uh, our regular retail price. Real quick, do those things nest if you spin them five degrees or whatever that would be? Yeah, exactly. So they're designed to nest for shipping and storage. So yeah, when we ship them out, we don't have to have a, a humongous box because we can put them inside of them. You know, for some of the people that missed... Um, the, the earlier story, the reason when they were designed to be uh, aluminum foil, you could they nested all the way down inside of each other, so you could easily ship 10, 20, 30 of these in a box, no problem. Now these ones, uh, these are um, these are prototypes, but uh, uh, our tagline is twist it, stack it, smoke it. So normally they're they're inside of each other, and then you lift it and you twist it and you stack it on top and get it uh, on the leg. So it actually is a twisting motion where you lift it up from bit from the nesting point and you can stack it on top of the other pan. Gotcha. All right. I got a couple more questions. Um, okay. After we get done, we're going to do like we did last week, which was, and if these guys want to stay on, they're more than welcome to stay on. Um, I'm going to put the link out to this live chat. It'll be off of YouTube, but if anybody wants to hang out and bullshit or ask them a more personalized question, if they have time to stay on, we'll do that. Cool. All right. Christy's cooking channel wants to know the best and the worst things you've ever cooked. Oh, uh, uh, on the pans? No, just or, in life. In life. Oh man. I, I made a, uh, uh, <laughs> this actually wasn't that long ago. I made a peach cobbler. That was an absolute disaster. That was the worst thing I've ever cooked. And it was only like a year ago. I made this peach cobbler and everything sunk down into the peaches and I, it was it was bad it was like my my wife and i took one bite of it and i threw the entire thing in the trash <laughs> so for me it would have to be something on the grill because i like i said before i don't cook inside when i do i burn everything so the worst thing would probably would be whatever i burned inside or burned on the grill accidentally <laughs> and the best thing i've ever cooked um Man, I don't know. I, I did this clam bake about 10 years ago. 
And I had like, it was like off the hook, man, like crab leg, like king crab legs, mussels, clams, lobster. You know, I ran one of those pots. I don't have one, but I ran one of those clam based pot, those uh, uh, clam baked pots. That was probably one of the best things I've ever made. For me, uh, one of the best was uh, when for Bree's birthday, uh, my wife's birthday, I got, uh, I went to and got one of those huge tomahawk steaks. Uh, I think they're, oh, really? I yeah, they're that. a couple pounds. I mean, they're, they're giant. They're, they're probably two and a half inches thick. Uh, one steak will feed three or four people. And I reverse seared that. I put that on the Weber nice. Smoky Mountain, reverse seared that, and then uh, threw it on my Weber Genesis gasser at, you know, four or 500 degrees, a couple minutes quickly on each side. And that was probably one of the best steaks I've ever had. All right. Funniest thing that's happened while you guys were recording that we never saw either after editing or it just didn't get posted. Oh man, there's probably a bunch of those. Gosh, I don't even know. Um, well, we made a turkey. We got yeah, we made this yeah. turkey. We made this turkey, and it was a freaking disaster. What yeah. even happened? Like well, we, we, temperature we, control. Yeah, I think what happened it was cold. Was, it was like we, thirty degrees out. We ran out of coals. Yeah, <laughs> we were cooking, and we ran out of coals. And then we put the coals, we put more coals in, and then we decided to stir that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We decided inside, to... <laughs> inside the Weber Smoky Mountain, which means every ash that went up from stirring them went all over the food. So <laughs> yeah. we pulled the food out when it was done, and it was... It I was mean, ashy. It was pretty ashy. <laughs> yeah. So that was the worst. I mean, was, <laughs> that was the worst. Every video was bad. We tried to put barbecue and sauce it on great the turkey. Before, it was perfect before we stirred the coals. Oh, After we stirred the coals, was, yep. it was like, because the temperature, it, it just dropped. We yeah. lost coal. Oh, my God. It was a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, ah, oh, we tried. Yep. We learned a lot that day. <laughs> yeah. All right, last right, there everybody knows this anyway. Like don't stir don't your charcoal. Stir your charcoal. And it's, that's like the basic thing for any smoker. Like, why would you even do it? It's like because it was cold and we had to like we try to stoke the fire. Yeah. It's, like, it's pretty funny. But that All was right. that was the biggest fuck up we've had so far. <laughs> All right, last two questions. Okay. Number one, what's your guilty food pleasure? Gummy bears. Oh man, anything cream sauce, like anything like ice cream, like uh, that includes ice cream, but anything cream sauce, like heavy butter, heavy cream. That's my guilty food pleasure. I like me some gummy bears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haribo. And, and, uh, and, and actually, uh, I like uh, Tito's in soda. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Coors Light. That's my, that's my, you know, that, that's Coors Light. <laughs> yeah, I had my first and probably only beer of the year at your house. Really? Oh, man. I uh, typically drink bourbon, but. Oh, gotcha. All right. Oh, so God. it wasn't that you don't drink, you just don't drink beer. I got right. it. <laughs> I was trying to be polite, and granted, it's only six blocks away, but I was trying to not get a DUI from A to B. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> All right. Um, who would be on each of your guys' personal Mount Rushmore? Oh my God. Four people? Is that four people? Four people. Four people each. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, my mom, my dad, my wife, and um, got my kids. They'd have to just, I'd have to have a two headed kid. That's a, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, my wife, me, sure. me, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Andrew Carnegie, Carnegie would be on there. My wife, Andrew Carnegie, my dad, and I need one other person. The three-legged yeah. dog. Vote for the three-legged dog. <laughs> and Rick James, my dog. Yeah, Rick James. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get off here. I don't know. You guys have time to stick around for a little bit after this? Sure. Yeah. Yep, yeah, for sure. All right. I am going to literally drop. Okay. I'm going to sign off the show, and then I'm going to drop the link in the description. If you're going to hang out, 
with us, you got to open it up with the Google Chrome, uh, Google Chrome browser or on your phone, use the Google Hangouts app. Um, I'll give you guys the last words, whatever you guys want to tell people. Have at it. Awesome. So, um, you know, uh, we just want to say thanks again for, for having us on the show. It, it really means a lot that you, you gave us this time to, to come on here and tell our story and, and, and show our product to, to everybody out there. Um, we are live on Kickstarter for nine more days. Uh, we would love for you to support us, back us on Kickstarter. You'll get your pans. will be delivered in August. Everything is lined up. This isn't a product that has to be, you know, no, nothing is done overseas. It's a one-stop shop, pretty much a singular process. So uh, we're going to be, you know, in production probably three to four weeks after the, the campaign ends, June 3rd. And then, you know, like I said, we're going to be shipping uh, – it, it, early August, uh, all of our pans out for our backers. So uh, you can get more information on our website at, at www.smokestackpans. That's stacks with two X uh, dot com. And then, of course, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube as well. Cool. My Great. last words are thank you so much, Chris, for having us. Yeah. Thanks for all the listeners out there. We really appreciate it. Uh, your attention and 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 to the show and the questions in Portuguese even yeah and in Portuguese even eu tenho um amigo de um brasileiro ou não brasileiro americano fala uh, português you're just showing off now in my own yeah, he's just, listening just showing off now but I'd be careful because it wouldn't surprise me if Red doesn't show up in the after show right <laughs> that'd be cool man I'd like to talk to him but anyways <laughs> thank you so much Chris and that's my last thanks person. everybody thanks for, for watching your and Thanks for watching. It's been really nice. Thank you. All right. I'm going to repeat this one more time. The link has to be opened up in Google Chrome. You got to have a webcam and microphone, or you got to use your phone and have the Google Hangouts app and be logged in and all that stuff. I'm going to put the link now. Chris, yeah. we don't have to do anything, right? You're good. You're okay. Good. All right.